the one, the only, Ben Seal. Good evening and welcome to Yeshiva YouTube. Just off it. Today we're doing Masecha Sota Daf Lamed Chet, number 38. Starting a new Mishnah. Nisiyas Kapayim Berkaz Kalanim. If you live here in Israel, um, familiar with it, it's done on a daily basis. If you live in America, it's not done on a daily basis, <laughs> hardly ever. Growing up, it wasn't something I really thought about too much, but when I first came here to the mirror when I was <clears throat> 21 years old, I did it every day. Um, it didn't really affect me, but I had a friend who was a co and he said he hated it because <laughs> he had to go up every day, <laughs> in the, you know, until you have to wash your hands and you have to take off your shoes. Let's learn about this today. This is what today's DAP is centered on. The mission on the bottom of Laman Zion would be is Mishnah says, Berkas Kohanim Ketza. <clears throat> How do you do Berkas Kohanim? Medina Omer Osa Shalosh Brachos. Medina, outside of the base of Mikdash. You say three Brachos. Now, we know what three Brachos are. It says in the Torah, right? It starts off as, I'm forgetting here. Hashem <laughs> That's the first Bracha. Hashem Hashem Shalom. Those are the three Brachos. So, in Eretz Israel, you say, Amen. He stopped after the three, the three different brachos, and he said the congregation answers Amen. The Mikdash bracha achas, and the Mikdash, where they didn't answer Amen, so therefore they just said and they said it together. Mikdash Omer es Hashem kichsavo. In the Mikdash, they used to say Yudke Vavke, <coughs> how it's pronounced, like Jehovah's Witnesses, if you all know how it's pronounced. But Medina Bikinuyov, and the rest of Israel, they say. They say Ado, no, figure it out. But Medina Kohanim knows him as day and can get cut fan. In the Medina, in Eretz Yisrael, the Kohanim pick up their hands. This is what most people do. You see them, they go like this. You know, am I allowed to do this? The guy in Star on Star Trek did Vulcan. What's his name? Uh, what's the guy's name? The guy in Star Trek. I forgot his name. The V, the Vulcan salute or something like that. So that's what they do. Um, they pick up their hands, you know, basically shoulder to shoulder height. With um, mikdash agave roshayin and the mikdash, they would do it like this above their heads, top of their heads. Chutz mi kohen gadol sheino magbias yada v'malam and I said, "Tzad the kohen gadol, he's a kohen also, but the tzitz was basically on his forehead over here, so he couldn't pick up his hands more than the tzitz. He wouldn't pick up the top of his head." Rabbi Huda Omer, "Af kohen gadol magbias yada v'malam and I said, 'Shenemar vayisa aron as yada v'ela ama yivarchem.'" Even the Kohen Gadol picks it up to the top of his head. What's the proof? The Father says, Aaron picked up his hands to the nation and blessed them. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> it's not exactly clear in this passage where you see that Aaron was the Kohen Gadol, but where does he see that he picked it up to the top of his head? That's not so clear. I'll try to give a resolution to that in Eon Ben Sion, but the most of Eon Ben Sion I'm going to be talking about, the Ian share I give on Daf Yomi, I'm going to be talking about the word Nesias Kapayim, which is... You know, another way of referring to Birkas Kohanim, because they do, like it says, they picked up their kapayim, they pick up their hands, and they bless you. Oftentimes, tefillah, right, uh, I, this is referred to as nisias kapayim, right? Nisa, I pick up my hands to daven to Hashem. What's the connection between Birkas Kohanim and nisias kapayim? I'll talk about that in Yom Ben Sion. It's a very, it's a very important share because I'm going to talk really how it relates to you know, people talk about hishtadlus, earning a parnasa. You'll see it in the events and how it relates to earning money, um, earning what kind of job you have to undertake, how much effort you have to put into your job. People always say, some people say, I have to work as hard as I can. Other people say, no, you do a little hishtadlus and Hashem takes care of the rest. But there's the big question, how much hishtadlus is necessary? And I believe I have an answer from today's Gemara to tell you exactly how much um, effort is necessary to gauge because if you completely you know go all in into working you will obliterate your family life completely you'll never have a work-life balance people will say there's no such thing as a work-life balance but the torah has the best of both worlds so i believe there is an answer to that question and this is a fundamental question that most <clears throat> men who are in business grapple with you know how much is too much how much work should how much effort should i be putting in People want to be perfectionists. 
people want to make every dollar they can but when is it considered too much too much work some people are the opposite they say oh, i'll just you know i'll knock on a couple people's door the only thing knock on five people's door even if i raise a hundred thousand dollars because i believe hashem will give me a hundred thousand dollars from these five people when i'm asking for it stuck on from them um it's not it's not a child to ask for stuck on. <laughs> and i don't think that's enough a even if they're rich people, they knock on five people's door and they'll stop after five people's doors. Hashem doesn't want me to have the money, I won't have the money. There is a middle ground, we'll talk about that. You know, the Mancion is very important. The Mara says, Tan Rabbana, Kosovarhu. The Torah says, by Brechus Kohanim, Kosovarhu, it tells the Kohanim, you should bless. The Lashon HaKodesh, it says you should, they, they do it. Brechus Kohanim is done, Lashon HaKodesh. Ata Omer, Maybe they could do it in any language. This is talking about Har Griz and Har Eval. Like we learned earlier in the Perak, we talked about Har Griz and Har Eval, right? We talked about earlier in the Perak um, how much uh, that it was done in Lashon HaKod, it was done in Hebrew. Here too, it also has to be done in Hebrew. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, you know, sorry. Rabbi Yehuda says, you don't need this. Sorry, Omer, ko, actually, Omer, Balashna, the word ko, as it is. What does that signify? It has to be as it is right now, presently, and therefore it has to be <coughs> as it is written in the Torah. It's written in the Torah in Hebrew. So that's why they have to say it in Hebrew. Tanya <coughs> Idach, another Bryce. Kosovarhu, Ba'amidach. Kohanim, when they do Birkat's Kohanim, they should be standing. Atam Ramido, you know, up to be a Shiva. Maybe they give you, even could be sitting. Namar Khan Kosev Arfu, but Namar Lahalan Ela Yamdu Lavare. Malahalan Ramida, Af Khan Bamida. It says by Har Grieves and Ra'ez Aval. It says Elo Yamdu. It says they stand, right? The Kohanim Lavi, when they were blessing, they were saying the, the Klolos and the Brachos, they were the Rocks and the Klolos, they were saying it to Har Grieves and Ra'ez they were standing. So here also it says bracha zero show a bracha bracha. Here also it has to be a bamida. Rab Nason Omer no sorry. He said Nason says you don't need the zero shav. Arei Omer lesharso levarach b'shmo. This is a pasuk in Devarim, not related to Berakas Kohanim, and it's not related to Hargrus and Arevah. However, it says when it comes to blessing Hashem's name lesharso levarach b'shmo. Ma mishar misharis bamida. Just like in the base of Migas, the Kohanim would do their avoda when they were standing. Af mivarach bamida. Any time you give a bracha, it has to be bamida. Well, Mishari is good for me now. How do you know Mishari is when you when the Kohanim served in the base of Medish, they did it standing? They'll see La Mod the Shari. It's different Pasuk and Dvarim. It says La Mod the Shari. Therefore, when they served, it was done with Amida standing. Tanya Ida, Ko Dvarfu, Benesias Kapayim. Bryce says Ko Dvarfu means it was done Benesias Kapayim, meaning with outstretched arms. That's what we, another name for various spots called Benesias Kapayim. Ada Omer Nesias Kapayim. We know Allah Shlob Nesias Kapayim. Maybe they don't have to stick out their hands to Kohanim. Nemar Khan Kodes of Arfu. Nemar Lahalan Vayisa Aron Es Yada. Vel Amal Yivarke. Aron blessed after he offered when they inaugurated the Mishkan. He went on the Mizbeach, brought his carbonos of inauguration, and then he blessed the Am. Malahalan Nesias Kapayim. Just like there, it says Yisa Aron Es Yada. He he extended his hands. Afkam Nesias Kapayim. Here also. <clears throat> when I guess this is the word bracha, there's our bracha bracha also in his kapayim. Kashalei the Reb Nath the Bionasan imala halan kohen gadol rosh kodesh of a seaward. If you're gonna learn bracha bracha from Aaron when he blessed Klal Yisrael, you should also have to learn it's not just kohanim. You should be the kohen gadol. Aaron was a kohen gadol rosh kodesh. Also have a rosh kodesh aleph nisan. That was a seaward. It was an avoda that was done on behalf of Klal of Klal Yisrael. Afkan kohen gadol rosh kodesh avoda seaward. You should say by nisias kapayim also. It should be only with the kohen gadol, only on rosh kodesh. And only when they're conducting the Avodah Sassiba, they're doing something, that, a communal responsibility, a carbon for the, commu for the community, for the, the Tzibor. Rav Nassan Omer, Rav Nassan answers this question. Eno Tzare, Chari Omer, Hu Vanav Kol Hayamim. Right, the Pasuk says, and that when it's talking about Aaron, Hu Vanav Kol Hayamim, Makish Vanav Lo, it compares Aaron to his, his children to him. Ma Hu Benesiyas Kapayim, just like Aaron. Extended his hands. Af bonav minasiyas kapayim. Ksiv kol yamim. Also said all the days, <clears throat> meaning not just rosh chodesh, not just when the times of bringing carbonos for the seed, or any time, and every day practically in our Israel, you do minasiyas kapayim. Eskish bracha, eskish bracha l'sheiros, right? And we know before it says the pasuk says 
uh, so therefore, any time um, they're Masharis, meaning any time every day the Kohanim worked and in, in the base of Migdash, so therefore every day they, they gave the Baruch and the Sidas Kapayim. Sani Idach, the different writer says, Koz of Baruch is Menechal, B'Shem Mufurish. It means that it has to be done with Hashem's name explicitly, right? The way it's pronounced, right? Jehovah's Witnesses. Ata Omer B'Shem Mufurish, Oino Ela Bikino. Maybe it means you say Ado Shem. Tamalomar B'Sam was Shmi. The end of Yerachas Gohanim says, Hashem says, put my name, Shmi Hamyuchali, the name that is special to me. Ado, right? It just means your master. It could be used for anyone. Yudke Vavke, that's Hashem's name, a special word. You might think also in the rest of Eretz Israel, you should use Hashem's explicit name. Remember, Khan, the Sam was Shmi, and Emma Lahal, and Asum is Shmi, as Shemosham. Pasuk later on in, in Sefer Devarim says to place my name there. It's clear from that Pasuk, that's only talking about in the base of Migdash. Afkan, base of Here also says the word Sam is Shmi, the same phrase, it's only in the base of Migdash. Rabbi Yoshi Omer, you know, sorry, Rabbi Yoshi has a different source. Rabbi Omer, any place where I mention my name, I will come, well, you mention my name, Hashem saying, I will come and bless you. Does that mean that Hashem, it sounds askir like Hashem, that Hashem is going to mention his name, Hashem mentions his name anywhere. You can mention Hashem's name anywhere. What does that mean? Ella Mikrazem is Surasu. This 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 pasuk is a little out of order. Bechol Makom Asher Ava. How do you read it correct correctly? Bechol Makom Asher Ava Elech Oberachticha. Wherever place that I come and bless you, Sham Askir Es Shmi. Wherever I come and bless you, so then you should mention my name, my personal name. Yud Kevav Kvehechan Ava Elech Oberachticha. Where does Hashem go? At least through the Kohanim and bless you. He blesses you the base of Achira. The Shechina comes to the to the base of Megdash. Shal askir as shmi beis habechira. So there also that then you should mention my special name Yudke Vavke in the base of Megiddo. Tani idach another brayz a kos of arko is bnei Yisrael like this you should bless bnei Yisrael. Emli ella bnei Yisrael. I only know bnei Yisrael which are males. Geirim nashim avadim b'shukarim. I only you know people that are converts. People that are women or they're freed slaves. How do you know that you also bless them? Talmud Lomer and more lahem. It says Kozivarhu. And then it says a moral an extra word. Lakulahu. Moral hem is a commandment to the Kohanim to say to them, to everybody. Tanya Idach, another bride, says, Kozivarhu, upon him can I get upon him. The way Rekha's Kohanim is done is the Kohanim stay, stand facing the faces of the congregation. Atamar Panim can I get upon him? Alina Allah, upon him can I get Orif? You might think that the Kohanim faced them, but, but people turn turn their back to the Kohanim, their, their back of their neck, out of respect, maybe. It says, like the way a normal person speaks to his friend. You speak to a person face to face. You should say it loud, meaning that it should be audible. Maybe it could be just quietly that the Kohanim could say it. The way a person speaks to his friend. When you speak to your friend, you make it audible that he could hear it. Amar Abaye, Abaye said, Naktinan, Lishnaim Kore Kohanim. Right, if you're ever familiar, especially here in Israel, they do duchening every day. Um, only if there's two kohanim doing brikas kohanim do they announce before kohanim. Right, you don't say kohen. If it's only one kohen, you don't say anything. He just starts making the brach himself. Shenema, why do you know that for? I'm more lahem, right? Lishnayim. Really, I'm more lahem is a, a tzivoy. It's a commandment to the kohanim. To bless Klal Yisrael, but it's also in this drasha. It's interpreted Amor Lahem. The person who who gets the Kohanim ready should say to them in plural that there should be two Kohanim and not one Kohen. Amar of Chista, Naktina Kore Kohen Kore Kohanim. Ain Yisrael Kore Kohanim. The person who gets the Kohanim ready he says Kohanim to get them ready has to be a Kohen. Shenamar Amor Lahem. Amira Misha Lahem. This is a different drasha. Amor Lahem. The Amira, right, getting the right to coin ready should be from them, from the Kohanim themselves. Tehei, Mishalahem Tehei, Atabu Lama Chem of Bees. Vehilchasa Kabasi de Abai, Vilesachasa Kabasi de Rachista. Umar says the first halacha is true, like Abaye says, that you only say Kohanim, you don't say Kohen. However, the second halacha is not true. Even in Israel, could 
prepare the Kohanim. Amar Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, Minayin, Shakosh Baruch Hu Musa'ava Lebirkas Kohanim. How do you know Kodesh Baruch Hu loves Birkas Kohanim? Shenemar, Hu Samu es Shmi al Bnei Yisrael Bani Avarchim. Right, which is a reference, the Gemara is assuming, to Birkas Kohanim. Once you place my name on, on Klal Yisrael, you give them the bracha of Birkas Kohanim, which primarily is a financial blessing. They're basically successful in their business. And I'll bless them. So you see, Hashem is happy with it. Amr Yishob Levi, Kol Kohen Shemavarech Mizbarech. Any Kohen which gets up in Dukhans, he himself will be blessed. She'enu Mavarech and Mizbarech. If he does not bless Klal Yisrael, he's not going to be blessed. She'enemar Vavarecham Mivarechecha. Right? This is said to Arma, you know, Hashem says, the people that bless you will be blessed. So the Gemara interprets over here um, that Hashem says, I will bless the people that bless others. Amr Yishob ben Levi, Kol Kohen She'enu Olu L'Dukhan, over B'Shlosha Esse. Any Kohen who's able to go up in Dukhan, and it's not, he violates not doing three mitzvahs, positive mitzvahs. And the Parsha says, Kosevarko, Amor Lahem, B'Sam Shmi, three positive commandments, supposed to engage in, in, in Berkaz Kohan. Rav Amar, Choshen Shem Ben Grusha Ben Chalutz. Rav adds the fact that if a person is able to do Berkaz Kohan and does not do so, we suspect that the reason he's not getting up to do so is he actually is a chalal. He's a son. Uh, his father was a Kohen, but his father married a Grusha or a Chalutza, which would render him a chalal, which he wouldn't be able to do breakfast on him. So we suspect him for that. And below Pligi, and they're not saying things which are contradictory to each other. If you never come up, right, then we are Chosh, your Ben Grusha, Ben Chalutza. If you come up sometimes... So Rav didn't mean to say that Rakosh is your Bengush and Klusa. Otherwise, you're, why would you come up sometimes? Uh, but uh, but if you only come up sometimes, that's the first teaching that you lose out on three mitzvahs every time you're able to come up and you don't come up. The time that's critical for you to start going up, we'll see, is the avoda, right? When the Shliach Sibor is saying, starts saying Ritze, right? Ritze is... is the Avoda, the part of Shmon Estre, right? the third part of Shmon Estre, the Avoda, let's say the beginning of, of the third part of Shmon Estre, the Avoda, let's say, the Bracha, let's say. If he hasn't started going up by that point, he doesn't go up to Dukhan. This again, this is the same pasuk we had before, that Aaron went to bless Bnei Yisrael after he did the Karbonos on the inauguration of the Mishkan. Mala Holland by Avoda, just like over there, Aaron was blessing them when he did Avodah, he brought a korban. Afkan Bavoda, here also in Shmona Esrei, when they go up to Dukhan, it has to be Bavoda, they start going up. Any is this true? But how Rabbi Ami Rabbi Asi, Salki? Rabbi Asi went up even after Avodah. The answer is Rabbi Ami Rabbi Asi, Mikara Havu Akri Karayu, Mimata, Mimta Lo Havu Matu Hasam. They were in the back of the shul. By the time the Chaz, the Shlil Sibur started Avodah, they had moved their feet, they had started to go up. They didn't get up there till, let's say, Modib, but they had started moving. That's the critical point. And you start moving towards going up, that you have to do by Avoda. Uktitani Rabbi Oshaya, like Rabbi Oshaya taught in Rabbi Yisrael, Lo Shano El Shalo Akar Ashraglav. Akar Ashraglav, Ola. The only taught that you don't go up if you haven't moved by Avoda is talking about if you haven't moved yet. But if you start moving, I would say, even though you're not up there yet, you can continue until you get up. To the platform, to the dukhan, the platform, dukhan means a platform. To not nami, have a proof to this from the mission. Masechas brachos. Im hafta chaso, im hafta chaso, shenose as kaf of a chosel as filasa rashi. Right. Normally, a shliach sibur who's davening for the amud, even though he's a kohen, he should not engage in berkas kohanim because we're worried they didn't have sidurim back then. If we engage in berkas kohanim, we won't be able to come back to. To being a shleach sibur after it was over, but if he's sure he knows the tefillah so well, so then he's allowed to avina. But we asked the question about that mission. Halo akar. He has to go up. He has to go up to the dochen. He has to to move. He's not showing that he's a kohen. Ella did not porta. It must be the shleach sibur is not supposed to go up fully, but he moves a little bit. Hakanami the akar porta is here. So here also, moving a little bit is good enough. And therefore, the fact that he started to move. By Ritze means basically that he's already up on the Dukhan and he continue, he could continue on his way up to the Dukhan to do Birkas Kohanim. Amr Rabbi Shubhan Levi, Ein Nosen Koshal Bracha Levarich El El Tovayim. When you're giving a Kosh Bracha out, people are getting married, you want to know who the Shev Bracha said. 
you have to make sure the person is a tovai and he's a generous person as opposed to a miser we'll see in a second generous person shenemar tovai and who you vorach kinasa malach waladal tovai and literally the pasuk means someone who's a generous person he'll be blessed because he gave of his bread to a poor people. A different way of learning of learning the, the word Yevora. It's not spelled with a vav. Yevora. He should do the blessings. People who are generous. People who are not cheap should do the blessings. <laughs> How do you know even birds can tell if a person is stingy or not? It's talking about birds from the perspective of birds, right? If you feed birds, you want to trap birds, right? So you put bird feed in the trap. But the, the stingy people don't put enough bird feed, so therefore they don't get trapped. So that's what Pesach is saying. The, the Baal Knaf, this, the bird, they realize when a person's stingy, he doesn't put enough bird feed in the trap. Anyone who benefits from people that are frugal and very uh, are miserly, he... Um, he violates a law. People are miserly. If you take from them without asking them, even if you ask them, sometimes they ask them, they'll say yes, but it really hurts them very much. You shouldn't take the bread from people that are raw and that people that have a narrow eye, people that are, are miserly. He has pain in his heart. And even though I'll tell you, go eat and drink, um, that's what I'll tell you. But really, the pastor continues. He really his his heart doesn't really want you to have that. You actually violate two negative commandments. Al The pastor is is not quoted fully here. The pastor actually reads Al Tilkam as Lechem Ra'ayin the Matamoso. So it says two negative things over here. You shouldn't. Take from his bread and shouldn't infringe on his boundaries. The whole concept of Egla Rufa, we'll learn about this soon. Egla Rufa is basically someone who dies between two cities, in between two cities. You don't know, you don't know who, which city is responsible for his murder. So the city which is closest, they have to take a, a calf and go to a valley and decapitate it because they're held responsible for it. Um, but it only comes because people were narrow-eyed, people were miserly. When they, the procedure, when they decapitate the calf in the valley, as they say, the Ziknei there's that five Zikanim elderly from, they accompany this decapitation, and they say, they pledge it was not our fault. We, our, our hands were not, did not contribute to his blood being spilled. Usually, this Ganim, these elders were people from Basin. They respected Dayonim. We would think they're actually Shokhe What are they saying? What they mean to say is he didn't come into our hands. This person. <coughs> Who left the city and died in the middle of the two cities? He didn't come to our hands, and we let him go, and we didn't see him, um, and we didn't let him. So what does that mean? I mean, we didn't. He didn't come to our hands, and we didn't give him food. Meaning, a lot of times someone dies because they lack food in the middle of the journey. So they testify it wasn't our fault, right? We. We're we're responsible for the city. We ensured that he had food on his way. We didn't leave him without escort. We made sure that he had someone to escort him on his journey. Beis that's full of kohanim. Only kohanim. Avishol is only kohanim. They all got up to bless. Who are they blessing? There's no one to bless. They're blessing the people in the fields. If people are working in the fields, they couldn't come to show they're blessing them. Any is this true about Tani Abba Braidarav Minyamin Barhia? Am Shakura Kohanim and Machal Bracha. Right? You'll see sometimes people doing Birgas Kohanim. A lot of people, people who are in the front row will move backwards because if you're behind the Kohanim, you don't get the Bracha. So 
a lot of time these people in the fields they were behind the shul. So how are they getting the bracha? Lo kasha had anisi had lo anisi. Right. If they're honest, they're busy working. They couldn't come to shul. So then you get the bracha even if you're behind the kohanim. But if you're in shul, then you should make sure to be in front of the kohanim. We have a problem from a different brisa. Rav Simi from the capital city of Shechori. They had a, a shul which was entirely Kohanim. And what the practice was that some of them went up and some of them remained in their place and answered Amin. It depends if 10 people are left. I'm um, sorry. Um, the, the minimum Kohanim that go up is two, generally. So therefore, if you have 12 people in the shul, so even though they're all Kohanim, so two people go up and 10 are blessed. You need the Sibwa that's being blessed. But if there's only 11 or 10, so then they all go up. Gufa. Tana Abba Breda Rav Minyam Barachiyah Am Shachare Kohanim Enam Chal Bracha We said before that people... That are behind the Quran and are not including the bracha pshita. So Mar says pshita arichi ba'afi kutsi lo mifsiki. Right, if you have tall people in the front row and short people behind them, it's obvious that the Gemara they're included in the bracha. Teva lo mifsika. Also, if you have the ark where you keep the, the Torah, not nowadays the practice is to put it in the front of the shul, and not all, it wasn't always like that. So that that if you're standing behind the aron, it's not mafsik. Mechitza mai. What if you have a wall in the middle of the shul? And you're standing behind that. Does that interfere with your accepting in the Perkaz Kohanim? Tashma, Dama Rishu Ben Levi. Afilu mechitza shal barzal enum afseka es ben Yisrael avim shuvah shamayim. This is saying Rishu Ben Levi, which is not made directly and related to this halacha, but he says elsewhere, even a wall of iron doesn't stop between Klal Yisrael and Hashem, meaning the tefillos of Klal Yisrael always heard by Hashem. So this is used over here to say even when Birkas Kohanim, the Mechitza would not get in the way over here. It's interesting to note over here, this is, you know, this is really Agarita. Even Mechitza shall barzal. You know, it's talking about the Tfilos of a, even an iron wall doesn't separate from the Tfilos. Um, and it's using Agarita really to answer a question of Halacha. Interesting. Yibayaluhu, Stadin Mahu. So I ask the question, what about Stadin? Meaning... The Kohanim are standing over here, let's say, and I have people in front of me, not directly in front of me, to the sides of me, but in front of me. Are they included in the bracha or not? Amar Abba Bar Maravashi, Tashma, Distan. We learn with Sakas Para, when the when you when they had the para doing with things which are tummy mace, right? They sprinkled um the the mechatas, the water from the para duma, not just on people, also on Kalim. So let's say this Kaban the Hazas will front of the Kohen who is sprinkling the mechatas, he sprinkles, he tries to sprinkle in front of him. And by accident, it went backwards. He doesn't have a good aim. He's a funnel, right? You tend to do it backwards and went forwards. Hazar so psula. It's not a good hazar. It doesn't work. Because he has to ask Kavani. He has to know what he's doing it on. However, if he intends to do it right in front of him and it goes to the front of him below to the, to the side, that is kshera because that's considered intent. It's considered in front of him. So likewise, over here, when it comes to Birgit's Gohanim, even though you're not directly in front of the Kohanim, you're to the side, but you're in front, that's considered to be in front of them, and you would get the Baruch HaVerkas Kohanim. That's the conclusion of tonight's shiar. Stay tuned for Ian with Ben Sia. When I talk about the idea of Nesiyas Kapayim, what, you know, it's used interchangeably with the word Verkas Kohanim. Nesiyas Kapayim, it's also a language used by Tfila also. Um, what exactly is Verkas Kohanim? Nesiyas Kapayim, what is the Bracha? And... What does it have to do with the level of Ishtadlus you have to do in terms of Parnasa? Try to bring a proof from this Gemara. Ino Ben Sion coming up next.